Hello everybody, welcome back to day 19 of the problems of the day. I can't believe we've got through this many. There's only one more video of these left after this one. So let's crack on and get day 19 finished. We're going to start as ever with the orange questions of the day. So let's have a look here at this money question. Oh, just make myself a bit bigger for you. There we go. So Mo has six 5p coins and five 10p coins. He buys this lolly, which is labelled as 49 pence. How much money does he have left? So let's think about what we know here. Mo has six 5p coins. So he's got six lots of five. So how much money does Mo have in 5p coins? Well, if we've got six lots of, we know we're doing a multiplication. So we're doing six times five or five times six, whichever you find easier. Which we know means that Mo has 30p in 5p coins. But Mo also has some 10p coins. He has five lots of 10p coins. So again, because it's lots of, we're doing times. So five times 10 or 10 times five, whatever is easier. So he has 30p in 5p coins and 50p in 10p coins. So we can look at how much money Mo has all together in total. We need to total up our parts, our 30 and our 50p. We add those together, I can see that Mo has 80p. Now, Mo buys this lolly, which is 49p. How much does he have left? So all I need to do is find the difference between 49p and 80p, which is a subtraction. But actually, I'm going to use my number knowledge of how numbers relate to each other and say, well, 49p is 1p less than the 50p. So he actually only needed his 10p coins to buy that lolly. So when he buys that lolly, he has 1p left from his 10p coins, and he still has all of his 30p coins. They haven't gone it, or his 5p coins, sorry, he's still got all 30p. That hasn't gone anywhere. So if he has 30p in 5p coins, and he has 1p left from his 10p coins, he has 31p. But if you don't believe me, you can check it. You can do 80 take away 49. If we do 80, take away 40, we get to 40. Take away 9, get to 31p. So Mo has 31p left. Okay, let's move on to question two of Mrs. Green selling her muffins. So Mrs. Green bakes muffins and she sells them in her shop. On Monday, she bakes 30 muffins and sells 18 of them. On Tuesday, she bakes twice as many as she did on Monday but she has the same amount left at the end of the day. So how many did she sell on the Tuesday? So let's have a look here then. So on Monday, she baked 30. And then she sells 18. So how many does she have left? So if we draw this out in our bar model to help us picture it, she bakes 30, she sells 18, how many are left? Well, we've got the whole, we've got one part, it's a difference question. 30 take away 18. Again, I'm going to use the counting on method because I find it easier to do in my head. So 18 plus 2 gets me to 20, plus 10 gets me to 30, so 2 and 10. She has 12 muffins left. So this is Monday. Now, on Tuesday, we are told that she bakes twice as many. So twice as many means two times as big. So if on Monday she sold 30, but on Tuesday, sorry, on Monday she baked 30, but on Tuesday she baked twice as many, we need two lots of 30. So double 30 is 60. But we're told that she has the same amount left at the end of the day. Now, on Monday, she had 12 left. 
So on Tuesday, she must have 12 left. And we were asked, how many did she sell? So we need to figure out here the gap, the difference between 12 and 60 to find out how many she sold. So 60 take away 12. If we partition this into its tens and ones, I can do 60 take away 10 is 50, and then 50 take away 2 is 48. So Mrs. Green sold 48 muffins on Tuesday. Okay, and that's it. That's orange of day 19 done. That felt really quick today. So let's move on to blue of day 19. I think it's because there's only two questions. Right. So we have got a diagram here and it tells us that the diameter of a 10p coin is 24.5 millimetres. The diameter of a 5p coin is 18 millimetres. And some coins are laid out end to end as you can see in the picture. So we have one, two, three, four 10p coins. And we have one, two, three, four, five, five P coins. One, two, three, four, five, five P coins. And then we're asked to find the distance labeled B on the diagram. So I've copied it out onto my whiteboard as I've been talking so that we can have a look at this. Now, the first thing here is we need to know a bit of our math terminology. We are told that the diameter of a 10p coin is 24.5. Well, can we remember what that word diameter means? So when we work with circles, oh, I'm quite impressed with that freehand circle. When we work with circles, we use the word diameter to represent going from one side to the other of the circle through the center point. It must go through the middle. But my red line here is an example of a diameter. If I did it that way or that way or that way, any of those red lines are a diameter because they all go from one edge to another edge through the center. So if we come over to our diagram here, we can say, because these coins are laid out end to end, the diameter is the length going through the middle. So I've drawn my red lines to show the diameter of the 10p coins. And let's also show the diameter of the 5p coins. Okay, now how does this help us figure out the measurement B? Well, we are told that the diameter of a 10p coin is 24.5. So this red line is 24.5, and this red line, and this red line, and this red line. So we have four lots of 24.5 millimeters. So we could write out 24.5 times four. And we can do our multiplication that way. Let's have a go at this. Four lots of five are 20. Four lots of four are 16 plus two is 18. Four lots of two are eight plus one is nine. But I must remember to put my decimal point into my answer. Now, when we multiply using decimals, the rule we have to remember is to see how many decimal places are in our factors. Remember, that's the numbers we've times together. So there's no decimal places in the number four. That's just four ones. There is one decimal place or one digit after the decimal point in 24.5. So we have one decimal place between our factors, which means we must have one decimal place in our product or our answer. So I'm going to pop my decimal point in there. So I know that 24.5 times 4 is 
millimetres, because 98.0 is the same as 98. Now that is one way we could do that calculation. To practice how your numbers relate to each other, remember that we know that 0.5 is a half. So four lots of 0.5 is two. Now I know 24.5 is very close to 25, and I know four times 25 is 100. That's the number we work with a lot. So I could have done four lots of 25 is 100, then four lots of 0.5 is two and take it off, and I'd have got to the same answer. Okay, so we know this distance across the 10p coins is 98 millimetres. So between the two green lines is 98 millimetres. Now, we also know that these black lines, the diameters of the 5p coins, it's 18 millimetres. So we have one, two, three, four, five this time. We have five lots of 18 millimetres. So let's do our multiplication. So five times eight is 40. Put the zero in, carry the four. Five times one is five, add the four is nine. So I now know that the length of the five P coins all lined up is 90 millimeters. So if I know that the length of the 10 P coins is 98 millimeters, and the length of the 5p coins is 90 millimetres, length B is the gap or the difference between them. What do I have to add to 90 to get 98? Or what do I have to take from 98 to get 90? That's right, so B is going to equal 8 millimetres. And it's important that we remember it is in millimetres. Okay. That is question one of blue done. So we've just got to move on to question two. I'll just wipe off my whiteboard there. Okay, so we're back to Mrs. Green's bakery and her muffins. Mrs. Green bakes some muffins and sells them in her shop. On Monday, she bakes 200 and sells 70% of them. I'm gonna start by drawing it out as I'm reading so I can label what I know. So on Monday, she bakes 200, so I'm going to draw out a bar, and the whole bar is 200 muffins. She sells 70% of them. So I'm going to have sells 70%, and then I'm going to have left. On Tuesday, she bakes twice as many. So we'll write out Tuesday, and we'll have a bar for Tuesday. Now, if we know that on Monday she baked 200 and on Tuesday she bakes twice as many, remember that's two times as big, we know that on Tuesday she must have baked 200 times two or 400 muffins. Now it says she has the same amount left. So what I need to do is figure out this bit because at the moment my left is blank over here so we need to go back to Monday before we can finish labelling Tuesday. So let's go back to our Monday. She baked 200 and she sold 70%. So what percent must she have had left? Remember that one whole amount is 100%. So if she sold 70%, she must have had 30% left. So we need to figure out either 70% or 30% of 200. Well, I could find out 10% first because if I divide by 10, I'll get 10%. Then I could times that by seven to get 70% or I could times that by three to get 30%. Now 200 divided by 10 is nice and easy. We're just moving our number one to the right on the place value or moving our decimal point one to the left, giving me 20. So 10% is 20. So I need three lots of that for 30%, which is 60. So she had 60 muffins left. 
Now, some of you might also then be able to calculate how many she sold. That is the gap between 200 and 60, or doing a takeaway, she sold 140. So now I've finished labeling Monday. I found out everything I need to know about Monday, how many she made, how many she sold, how many she had left, what percentage it was, that's great. On Tuesday, we're told she has the same amount left. So we're gonna start with this 60. I'm gonna label that at the end there. She has 60 left. So then this bit of the bar is how many she sells. Now it asks us what percentage of muffins she sold on Tuesday. So before we can work out the percentage, how many did she sell? She made 400 and she had 60 left at the end. So we're going to do 400 take away 60, which with your number bonds, you'll be able to work out is 340. She has 340 that she sold. So what percentage of muffins did she sell on Tuesday? So we need to think about how we write our percentage. So I'm just going to rub out Monday's bar so I've got room on my whiteboard. Remembering that when we work out percentages, the word percent actually means out of 100. Now, how many did she sell? 340. Out of how many did she make? 400. So we're going to start off with the fraction 340. And we're going to put it over 400. So she sold 340 out of 400 muffins. Now, looking at this, I can't figure out the percentage straight away, but I do know that percent means out of 100. So maybe I could simplify this fraction to make it over 100. Now, if I put that next to it and put over 100, let's think here, what do we do to 400 to turn it into 100. We divide it by four. And what's our rule with fractions? Whatever we do to the denominator, we have to do to the numerator. So we're going to have to attempt 340 divided by four. Okay, let's come over and use our bus stop method for this one. So fours into three don't go falls into 34. So have a go at doing your four times table. You can write it out if it helps. I know that eight fours are 32. So that leaves me with a remainder of two because I had eight fours in 34 with two left over and fours into 20 go five. So it does divide. 340 divided by four is 85. So I can now put that back into my fraction. So an equivalent fraction to 340 over 400 is 85 over 100. So as a percent, it just means out of 100. So 85 out of 100 is 85%. So on Tuesday, we can see that. Mrs. Green sold 85% of her muffins. Can you work out what percentage was left then as an added question? Remember, it must total to 100%. So she must have 15% left if she sold 85%. Fantastic, and that is day 19 done as well. You guys have been working really, really hard on these. Just one lot of the problems of the day to go. Come back tomorrow to see that video. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.